Hello and a very happy new year to you. Welcome to your program, Citizen's Voice. It's good to be here again. This is a new year and we're glad to know you are there. I'm Ambrose Ezewani. As usual, we have a lot to talk about. Things concerning us, around us, affecting us in our society. And as you know, you are free to tell us what's on your mind, the way you see it. And as usual, we have something to start off with. Today, we are looking at the role of lawyers in justice delivery. Every day in our society, we hear of cases different in nature. You have uh, delayed justice. You have uh, corruption, extrajudicial killings, child abuse, domestic violence, child trafficking, name it, stealing, in all forms. They all take place in our society. And somehow, for you to get justice, you need the services of lawyers. We are told, you have, if you have to go to the court, who will decide which is fair and which is not, you need the services of lawyers. And so we are asking this day, are lawyers doing their best in the justice delivery system? Do you think lawyers are doing their best? Put in mind the circumstances under which they operate. Looking at the cases you know. But I have here in the studios a seasoned lawyer, Barrister Ndidi Taiwo Ojo. You're welcome to our program. Thank you, sir. It's nice to have you here. I'm glad to and be here. I want to believe as a lawyer you know of what we are talking about. So many cases in our society, different in nature, but they are there. Yeah. And we need you people, the lawyers now, to bring justice to the situations we face. Okay. Let's begin with probably what is now the commonest or could be seen as the commonest. Child abuse, child trafficking. We hear more of that these days than before. Um, what's your take? What, what do you think is responsible for this development? Well, I, I, in my own opinion, I, I think child abuse has always existed. Mm. But um, because of the advent of social media, we are beginning to see more of it out in the open space. Because okay. it was something that was not widely spoken about. So something that, you know, the society didn't believe was an abuse. Most times they couch it under the um, influence of discipline in the sun and then um, it's, it's something that people wave off. Okay. But with, with the development in law and the people are becoming sensitive to seeing that this, is, this so called discipline is not really discipline mm -hmm. but it's child abuse. It damages the child, it damages an individual and that's why we have a lot of damage adults you know going about mm -hmm. now when on the other hand we're talking about sexual abuse i want to see yes there's an increase it has always been there with us anyway it has always happened but it's always talked about in hushed tones but now because of the access to media mm -hmm. now a lot of people can go to porn sites they are able to lack of in fact lack of discipline and self-control, we get to see a lot of social abuses on children, okay. you know, cropping up. Okay. We we'll talk of cases maybe taking about 12 years to decide in a court. Is that normal? It's not. It's not normal. Because justice is not just to be, not, not, it, it's, it's, it's supposed to be seen to have been done. Now, when you have a case that takes 12 years to decide, where is the justice? That's a question. Most times, people go to court because they are hot. People go to court because they need a solution to that answer, to a question or to a problem they have, a challenge they have. Yes. And then you get that solution 12 years after you have instituted an action. For me, there's no justice. We say justice is not only to a justice that is delayed might really not be justice at all. Is it right to conclude that uh, you lawyers play a role in that delay process? Because uh, we hear of adjournments, we hear of different things, and it takes time. Is, is, is it not in your hand to solve this problem? I mean, lawyers. It's, uh, well, uh, this uh, the question is a double. It needs a double. It's a double-edged 
question mm. with a double edged sword in that yes some of my colleagues actually play pranks you know by trying to delay when they know that they do not have a good case okay. they try to delay you know the hand of um justice you know by bringing in fictitious reasons illness they move their ill they write to the court they seek an adjournment a lot of reasons they you know file fictitious and uh, bogus applications trying to say that this justice mm. that, that the other party doesn't get that justice which is really against the ethics of our profession because we are not just law is not just a profession we is a noble one and we are seen to be ministers in the temple of justice you understand and then on the other hand we have overworked judges and magistrate and overworked bench we have we need more hands at the bench but so few are there trying to adjudicate on a lot of issues or a lot of cases there was a particular day i went to a court in um lagos a magistrate court and i saw over 60 cases listed for one day don't uh, I, I know i hope you are aware that court sits from nine to say around four okay. which is the closing time for now one person sitting on over 60 cases how to get to a point the person, the, 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 the magistrate, will begin to give dates. We say, look, take a date. Mm -hmm. Let this matter be adjourned. This is how, how much I can take. Okay. You understand me? And then it goes back. The who bears the bronze, the litigants, the person who seeks justice. Because the person who is um, the offender now in court, the, 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 the defendant, or the person who who is um, the aggressor now, <laughs> for him, all well and good if the case is, you know, delayed. But the person whose case is now, who has the case, who, who has, um, who seeks justice, you see, he is at a loss. Is it out of place for the judge or magistrate to, to give a deadline? For example, the case comes, he says, I want this matter prosecuted and done with in three months. For example. Yes. In fact, um, it's, is um, a rule that in the um, um, when it comes to the criminal administration um, administrative um, justice um, system, law, yeah, that a case must not be take more than three months. Okay, but like I said, the hands are tied. You have a judge, a magistrate, treating sixty cases in a day. How is the three months feasible? Yeah, but but if he works out uh, if he works out a deadline, mm. say every case will take this 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 and that, and he follows that, that deadline, he's overwhelmed already. Yeah, but he does. It shouldn't turn to a helpless situation. He should work out a formula for handling. They this. they assign cases to them. Mm. Do you who, understand? Who does the assignment? Of course, the the registrar. And he has no <laughs> right to say no. I think I have enough. No, the court is an, an open is an open place. Yeah. People seek justice, and they must, that is the only place that we, we, we practice the, um, the adversarial system of um, um, justice delivery, mm -hmm. of justice. So this is the only place that they can get justice. Good enough, you know, legal states and other states are not trying to right go the other way, mm -hmm. which is ADR, the Alternative Dispute Resolution yeah. System, saying that the courts are so congested. Do you understand me? Okay, is, are there cases? that can be tried by certified mediators, mm. conciliators and you know arbitrators. And this had and this had actually given um, a lot of um, relief to the courts. Because okay, there was a matter I handled, it was a divorce matter. Of course only the court that can handle such a matter. Mm. And then we had to get we, when it came to the custody issue. What the court said, okay, the court referred us to the multi-door house. Go and sort out the custody issue, the maintenance issue at the, at the um, multi-door house, and then come back for the dissolution of the marriage, which we did. And within six months, 
we got uh, our case resolved. Do okay. you understand me? So it still boils down to more hands. And if we can also explore this um, um, this Idea. other area, mm. which is your alternative dispute resolution, um, which I can tell you a lot of Nigerians is a welcome development in Nigeria and a lot of Nigerians are embracing. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, when you talk of uh, needing more hands, uh, there are more hands waiting there. Is it that the government is not ready to employ them or what? Exactly. Okay, that's the case. Now. That's the, that's because the case. I'm sure you have enough hands that's waiting. That's the case. Okay. The resources of the government are limited. Mm. Okay. So, they already in Nigeria, the bulk of our expenditures are on salaries. Mm. Coming from down from the Senate, down to the grassroots salaries the government is the largest employer of mm, labor mm. in nigeria as it stands and so they have limited resources okay Let, let's look at children mm. we talked of child abuse before uh, as we said it's we hear more of it these days um these young ones also need you people i mean talking of lawyers now mm, yes. to save them from the various situations are, are, are we making any progress in that direction oh beautiful that's um a multi-billion dollar question. <laughs> Are we making progress? Yes. Okay. But is the progress um, fast-paced? No. No. It is a very slow-paced progress. But like I say, it's better, instead of standing in one place, it's mm. either you crawl. You can't crawl. If you can't fly, you walk. You run. And if you can't run, you fly. And if you can't fly, or is there about, is it how, I think if you can't fly, you run. And if you can't run, you walk. And mm. if you can't walk, crawl. Okay. Don't just be in one position. Yes. That's where we are in the country. Beautifully, um, Lagos state government that's beheading the fight against child abuse. And I can tell you that um, if, I, if I'm going to give um, pass mark, I'm going to be giving the Lagos state government a 70% pass mark. Wow, for their good. yes, for their fight against child abuse and um, child uh, for child protection, mm. we now have a state government too, you know, also trying to pursue Lagos and possibly overtake them, because now a state has a sex offenders register, where convicted sexual offenders are published, and um, their, their their names are, are, are publicized in national dailies. Mm. And also, they have a register where these people are registered, so okay. they cannot walk where children, you know, are found. They cannot walk in schools. They cannot walk in in churches, in religious places, in mosques where children are, you know, to be. Mm. And they, 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 are, they people in the neighbor, the neighbors know that this people, that this person is a predator, is a pedophile, is a pedophile, and so they are on the watch, on the on the watch out. Okay, that, that's good. That's mm. good. That's good. Okay. Now, uh, how do you come to the aid of children who are abused? Because uh, it's like they don't have a voice of their own. Mm -hmm. They are intimidated. They, you know, it's, it's close knit and so on. And so on. How, how how do you get to uh, rescue them and help them? Uh, yeah, you know, um, my journey into child protection, I would say, was not by choice. It was by chance. I actually had always wanted to use this law profession as um, a tool for societal change. I knew that this is a profession that I can use in my own little corner to, you know, effect the positive changes I wanted in our society. Okay, I was always giving pro bono to people who were indigent. But in 2015, I... Got, um, I had a baby and I went to the hospital to um, get immunization for my, my daughter and I saw a little boy, Promise, who was stabbed by his mother hmm. because with broken bottom, two sides of his ribs because they alleged that he was, for six years, that he was abusing a two-year-old child and the mother used a broken bottle to stab her own child as a mother, I was, I, I was emotionally distraught. And I wondered what kind of a mother does this to her child. And I realized that even biological children need to be protected from their biological parents at times. Because what was the crime? 
And what was the punishment? A broken bottle, stabbing your own child, and that was what gave birth to my idea of you know registering a foundation. So I registered a foundation, stop the abuse against women and children, because I thought that women and children were the most vulnerable. It's not that men don't get abused, mm. but women and children were the most vulnerable in the society because our tradition and customs oftentimes subjugate this set of people. Okay. And so registering this organization, which actually took effect in um, 2018, I realized that, like the Bible says, the harvest was much, but the laborers were very few. A lot of people go into this for, me for pecuniary benefits. And I realized that this passion I had, I could translate it to making, giving a voice to the voiceless, which incidentally is the motto for my foundation, mm -hmm. giving a voice to the voiceless. And on this journey, I realized that most people began to know that, okay, this was what I was doing. Even colleagues started referring people to me, that look, this child has been abused, what can you do? And from there, we realized that we could use the institution, the police, um, the Nigerian police force, to make sure that these children get justice. We start making arrests and start pushing cases to court, and the rest is history. Mm. Do, do they get justice in the end? From your experience, the children now. Well, justice in this in this instance. Mm will be the institutionalized justice that we all know, okay. winning the case in court. Mm. But do you know justice could also be that this child mm. is rescued from his oppressor yes. and taken to a safe haven? Okay. That's another form of justice. That's right. That's right. Because at this point in time, mm. a child who is being abused doesn't know, it doesn't, it, for him, it, he's careless about whether this person goes to prison or not. All this child needs is for him to be away from this abusive, you know, um, environment. Mm. You understand me? And that is what we primarily focus on. Yes, we take people to court. We have a lot of cases in court. But it's, like you said, it's just a delivery system. We have cases where DPP's advice, there are cases that we have that has um, been charged since last year, and DPP's advice is yet to be out. See. Now, we have, uh, well, you say it's been there before, but now it's becoming more common. Yes. Uh, under the cover of house help, you have children seven years, eight years, being imported in quotes from somewhere, and they're there serving people in various places. And the, 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 most of these households are enlightened. Yes. So these girls or boys become, uh, well, call them house help for now, but uh, somehow, th th they are paid, that is, the contractor is paid for bringing them, so they are perpetually there to serve. They don't go to school, nothing like that. What, how do you describe such cases? Is that under it's, child abuse or child labor or what? It's a mirage, it falls under a mirage of crimes. Mm. It's, a, it's a pathetic situation where the, um, a child is trafficked. It could be within the country, it could be in trafficked intra-country intra tra traffic, intra-border traffic, or inter-border traffic. Mm. Intra-border is within the country, okay. and then inter-border from different countries. Mm. In Lagos, for instance, we have a lot of people from Benin, a, children, a lot of children from Benin, who are serving as house helps. One, morally, it's wrong for you to bring a child to serve your own children. Your child is not more special or is no more better than any, the, the other child who you have employed to serve your own children. Two is child labor, which is a crime. It's a very big crime. Three, it is child trafficking, which NATIP most often time have to get involved. And then you now have the abuse itself which under our local law is under crime. You see children being sexually abused by these homes that, that you know, um, employ them. The children, most, most often the older children, abuse the children sexually, 
abuse them physically, even the employers who are the madam and the others also abuse these children physically and sexually. We have a case that just two days ago that we, um, we were informed of um, somewhere in Okoba GRA scheme one, a, a, a reverend of an Anglican church, mm. you know, um, and his wife employed a little girl of seven years. She is now nine years. She stayed with them for two years. She's now nine years. Okay, and so that's the girl you're talking about. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. She, she, she has now been employed, you know, to take care of a 90, over 90 year old grandmother that stays with them. A seven year old child. A seven, she was brought when she was seven years old. Mm. And then when we saw this girl, we saw all over her body previous scars of beating. The girl said, the employer, who is the, 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 the reverend, reverend yeah. uses Koboko to beat her hmm. when she misbehaves. And when she, and the, 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 she went on the bed one day, last week, last week, not even so long ago, the wife of the reverend of a church plugged electric iron and burned this little girl. And when we asked her, Mama, why did you do it? She said she was playing with her. Hmm. I said, it's an, a, a hot electric iron, a toy. Electric iron in itself, is it a toy? I want to talk of a hot electric iron. Luckily, I'm very grateful to the Nigerian police force, Lagos Command. They do not take child abuse issues lightly. Okay. We're able to get them arrested, and they're still in custody. And I'm very hopeful that by next week, they'll be charged to court. We took the girl for medical report, for medical examination at Mirabel last week, and there were indications that she had been sexually violated, anally and vaginally. At at seven nine. Wow. That's that that's that that's the, 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 the sorry situation we find ourselves in this country. And I think it's not enough. Yes yesterday we took the child back to a home that accepted, one of the government approved homes mm. that had you know, accepted to take this girl in. Yes. And after the examination, when we brought the girl back to the home, the home refused to take the child from us, that there was a call from somewhere that this child should not be accepted back into their home. Wow. And I asked, what is the reason? Because this child is innocent, is traumatized. What do we do with this helpless, child? It's yes. helpless. It's helpless. What do we do? Because the, God, the, the, the homes, the orphanages, the homeless, the homes are the places that are approved to accept this child. I can't take this child as a private individual mm. without an order of court. Really? Yes. So Even as do, a lawyer? Yes, I can't. Mm. I am still, I am still under the laws of this country. So what do I do with this child? This is the approved place I'm supposed to put this child. And when we narrated the whole story to the, to the proprietress of the place, she was moved to tears. She saw that this child who was, who was not just being abused, was being, um, uh, um, try, th they're trying to, you know, victimize her too. Mm. Victimize her from getting justice, victimize her from getting a safe home where she can lay her head on. Okay, you, you, you've heard uh, the story so far here in the studios and uh, you, you live in this society. Maybe you have cases too of uh, uh, delayed justice, of injustice, name it. You want to share that with us. But the question is, do you think the lawyers are doing their best under the circumstances? Because we need them to get justice. Uh, let me even ask you, under our laws, can an individual take up his own or her own case and just decide to do without lawyers and go to the court and defend his yes, own case? Yes, you can, mm. but it's a very, very tricky situation. Why is it tricky? Tricky in that you are not learned. Yeah, but I, I know the facts of my case. I know what yeah. I've done, what has happened. Can't I just tell the court this is what happened? Yes. Yes. The, yes. However, the fact is mm. different from the truth. Okay. You can have the truth, mm. but do you know that with the truth you can indict yourself? Aha. Uh -huh. and, and lawyers can help me not to indict myself. Of course. That is mm. the essence of us being there. There are also cases where lawyers know that uh, Mr. A is guilty. But they asked Mr. A not to plead guilty. Of course, because there's, so a, presumption, the there's, a, presumption, there's a presumption of innocence under the Constitution. Mm. Everybody is presumed innocent until proven guilty. 
Yeah. And it is only the court that can prove you guilty. I'm not, I'm a lawyer, I can't prove you guilty. Yeah. You say you have done this. It's the presumption of innocence behoves on you to plead not guilty. Yeah, even but, if you are guilty. But but wasn't that even if you are guilty yes. and you plead guilty yes. in some crimes, mm. the court will still write not guilty for you. Yeah. Even really? when, you plead, when you plead guilty, yes, because the constitution says that you are not guilty until proven guilty. Okay, uh, assuming I uh, I steal something mm. and I come to you as a lawyer and say, actually, I stole that thing, but this is my story. Mm. This was what made me steal. Mm. I will go to court. Mm. Are you going to come openly and say, yes, he has admitted that he stole it? Of course not. So why not? My, my, I am, I am, um, you have um, briefed me. Mm -hmm. You've returned me to defend you. You have stolen. But if the, the, um, the, 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 how would I say now? The burden shifts to the prosecution to, to prove, prove that beyond all reasonable doubt okay. that you have stolen. You see, at times, as a person, you might not even know you didn't commit it. That's in that crime. Okay. For instance, if you went into a place, you understand me, and you picked a red barrel, meanwhile, it's not yours, really. Mm. But that red barrel was not noticed. Mm. What was not this missing was the blue barrel. But you, because you know you have stolen a barrel, and from you are accused of stealing a barrel, mm. because you know you've stolen a red barrel, you agree, yes, I stole a barrel. But that was not the barrel they are looking for. Mm. It's the blue barrel. Are you guilty of that crime? No. Yes, you see, you see but you have stolen. Mm -hmm. So, at, the, at this instance, it's not the, blue, it's not the red barrel, that is being asked of. That's right. It's the blue barrel. Yes. But I, but because you you have you have this toga of guilt, you have openly agreed that you have stolen a barrel. So it's for the for the for the for the, for the prosecution to now begin to prove that oh, this man has stolen a blue barrel, and they have to prove it that it was blue that you have stolen. Okay. That's an intelligent, an intelligent argument. Right. Let's hear from you at home. You're watching us. Tell us what you think. Uh, justice delivery in our system. Uh, are the lawyers doing their best? And if you know a case that, you know, you can summarize quickly, tell us uh, what you know about it and how it has happened so far and how the courts have handled so far, or what those involved, how it went. Because we also know that there are interferences, just as you yes. said, from above, from many quarters. Uh, how prevalent is that? So it's it very is. prevalent. We had a, a matter of a 13-year-old girl that was raped by the landlord of her mom, and she got pregnant, and um, the case was supposed to be charged to court. At the entrance of the court, the DPO of the, that particular police station called his, ofi his officers that they should come back with the case, that they were no more going to charge the case to court. And it was allegedly on the um, phone call made by a retired DIG to the DPO with you know of course veiled threats and the case was brought back to the this to the court and thank god because we belong to a network okay. of ngos a particular ngo which i belong um, network i belong which is um child advocates um network child advocates um network um there was um uh, child advocates and the vulnerable persons network sorry child advocates and vulnerable persons network they were we posted on the platform and Thank God the commissioner of police in Lagos State had to intervene and was like, look, this case has to be charged to court. Whether we like it, whether they like it or not, not. there's a crime. Luckily for, for us, the case was charged to court and the man is still in custody. Of okay, we have a citizen, uh, Bolu, uh, Bolu Atifre. How are you? Calling from Onikwan. Hello. Hello. It's nice to hear from you. Hello, Bonu. Your line is breaking. What's happening? Hello. Hello. Oh, dear. Okay, please go to try again. Um, I, I hope we've gotten it right from this end, please, so that we can have the calls. Uh, please try again. Um, okay, so so even at this, the, 
this 2020, we're still having cases still have of it. interruptions. Yes, uh, Nigeria is a country, um, how would I say, um, is it ruled now by God for that reason? Mm. The one person knows one person that knows one person that knows one person. Yeah. But that's not how we can make our children safe. That's not how we can get it right in this society. We can't get it right when I, there, there are laws. Laws. Well, I told, I tell people that we have well-crafted laws. But the implementation is the problem. Because if you want to implement, Hello? You, you want to shy away from corruption, you don't take Hello? gratification, Hello? you don't take bribes, you want to do your job as it is. And then someone calls from somewhere, Hello? because a superior officer, and you, because you're a junior Hello? officer, you have to... Um, Hello? Oh, investigation. Hello? Yeah. Okay, two day, citizen, two day. Hello? Ah, there is noise. I can't hear you. All right. Tune set. Tunde, are you there? Oh, dear. That's the second call we are missing. All right. Yes, we're talking of uh, connections and um, exactly. links. Yes, links. And and then I I know some police officers. There was a particular police station where gender trained officers were transferred. These are trained officers, the UNICEF trained, and they were transferred from gender, where their their the, the skills are best needed mm. to traffic sessions. Oh my God! Because they refuse to heed the a call from above. Yeah. And luckily, um, there was intervention and they were put back to their rightful position. But these are the ones we know. Mm. What of others that, that we do not know? Okay, let's try again. A citizen Kenneth, how are you? Hello, Kenneth. Uh, they are, they are, they are really trying. Huh? Eh? No, no, what I have to say is that they are trying, they are doing their best. They are, their work, I think, is better as good. Okay. You think lawyers are doing their best? Hello, Kenneth. Well, that, but that sounded like a woman. Hello? Who is on the line? Okay, okay. I, 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 it sounded like a woman saying yeah. that lawyers are doing their yeah. best. Okay, so you have a supporter there. Yeah. All right. We, we want you to relate your experiences in the society because uh, here we are. We cannot run away from where we are, uh, but many things are happening. We just talked about uh, interferences, even in the justice delivery system. Somebody knows somebody and tries to obstruct justice, as it were. Uh, okay, citizen Charles from Ikoi, how are you? Yeah, Hello? good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. You're welcome. My name is Charles. I'm coming from Nikoi. Okay. Please, I have a, a two questions I want to ask the madam, uh, the barrister. Okay, go ahead. Go on ahead. the program. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I had an experience. I, 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 there was a day I went to the police station to, to, to resolve an issue. Mm -hmm. So this Police people, they are, they are, they are, they, they, they often uh, try to, to, to like tell people to, to write a statement. They write statement for people. If somebody has any issues in police station and uh, maybe the person is alleged of one thing or the other, are they supposed to be the one to tell the person what he should write? Is it not the person that's supposed to write down whatever transpires? In, the, in, a, in any way that, that particular thing happened. Okay. Because I, 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 I happened to witness one when a police officer was telling somebody that he should be writing what he's telling him to write. Okay. And the person was telling, telling the police officer, no, it is not done that way. You were not there. So I, the person was telling the police officer that he is the one that was in that uh, uh, place. You should be the one in position to write what uh, happened, not the other way around where the police will have to be telling the person, write as I'm telling you. Uh, 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 the other one, another one, he will say, I will, I will cross examine you, I will ask you questions, and you'll be writing. And when I ask you questions, you will write, uh, you, you write the answer the way I want you to write it, not uh, to begin to narrate the whole story. 
Okay. That is okay. one. Mm -hmm. And my second question is, it has to do with uh, all these people that are raised. Mostly, I, 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 whenever I'm going to work, I normally see all these bikers arrest from the road and all that. They take them to a place. I don't want to begin to mention them. You understand? But they keep telling these people that when they get to the place, they should plead that they are guilty so that they will quickly sentence them and take them to a place where they will jail them. These people are innocent of other people who doesn't have any means of surviving. They depend solely on this bike business for them to make money. They have children, they have wives at home, and they arrest them because they, they commit one offense or the other. I don't know why, if they happen to do something, they should find a way out to uh, you know, moderate their, their excesses instead of arresting them and dumping them in jail and in, in prison and all that. So that is my, my question. I want the Honorable Barrister to actually uh, uh, help me to simplify the matter, how you should be. Okay, Charles, before you go, let's get one thing clear. You said some people, are, the bikers have been arrested by who exactly? Hello? There are some people that, there are the police officers who, okay. claim, who, who sometimes they, they are said they are doing their job. They arrest these people, they will take them to some places and they will uh, uh, tell uh, them to, uh, to, to maybe they, they think there is a kind of mobile court. There is a kind of okay. mobile court, they will take them court. to place and they begin to uh, tell them to plead the uh, one thing or the other. Okay, the mobile court. Okay, I think it's clear now. All right. The mobile court, let's start with that. Uh, the police asking those arrested to plead guilty as it were before the mobile court. Is that, is that, is that a possibility? Well, um, society the reflection, the, the, the court, the institutions rather, are a reflection of what society is, mm. really. Yeah. I, will get, I will have to say, I don't know if it's the, the years of um, literalization that has made us, at, uh, made us timid as a people and um, has also brought out the worst in us. I don't know. But I don't want to believe on the average that um, the average Nigerian is a good person. Mm. However, we have people who break the law. And like I said, our institutions are a reflection of what society is all about. You know, nobody should be forced to plead guilty. Okay. There's a presumption of innocence. Mm. I think that's section 138 of the Nigerian Constitution says that you are innocent until proven guilty. So why would you be forced to say you are guilty? More so, they use that guilty as a way for you to acquiesce to a crime because it's their word against your word. There's no camera on the street mm -hmm. that actually has the time, the particulars of when you defaulted. Okay. Do you understand me? So it's for them an easy and a cunning way to, to you know, nail their case. I'm not saying that people should go about breaking the law. Mm. But what I'm saying is that we should follow the law the way it is stipulated in total. And the law is for A, like what it is for B. Everybody is equal before the law. Mm. So if you want to prove a case, you should go with the law. You should not have to force people, you know, to accept a crime which they or did not commit. And because Nigerians are not knowledgeable about their rights, mm. you know, they would, they would say, ah, just please, they would deceive them, cajole them, I, I, I agree. Okay, we'll come back to that. Citizen Kule, how are you? You're All calling right. from Lekki? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I just want to make a quick inquiry about this medication center for Alausa. I, I realize they have some lawyers uh, working with them. And there is a, there is a case so one of my friends took to the place. And uh, he, he was just like telling me that it's like those lawyers there are not empowered yet. They are not empowered enough. Why? Because each time the case comes to them, they will analyze that they are just to make it between you two. They are, they are not going to force the, the defendants when they invite the defendants to come and refuse to come. So I begin to wonder what a institution, if they are not empowered to, do, to, to fight the cause of a uh, complainant, so that is why I'm calling to find that what are lawyers doing to this? Because that uh, my that friend of mine is stranded at this at this time. Each time a, a, a someone to uh, take care to them, 
it's more like um, they have to analyze the purpose of that uh, commission, what is meant for to them. Invariably, if you look at it, it's like uh, um, they are not being empowered enough. When they say these things to every complainant, they are already weakened, they are defeated. And the defendant is more empowered by that. When they invite them with, uh, with letter, they will not come. Several times, the guy has been going to this allowed secretariat to complain. They are not turning up. They are not doing anything. Those people who promise to come, they will not come. And it, the issue prolonged almost one year. Now, as he was telling me these things, and I am watching this program, I felt I should call him to find out what can that my friend do to a, situa a situation like this. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand this? I stuff? understand. Okay. But the truth of the matter is that there are many agencies. Mm. You know, I, 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 I would. Um, I don't know if it's far fetched to say that almost all the ministry have lawyers, and but everybody's work is well cut out. It depends on where his friend has gone to. Okay. I know there's a mediation center. No, and I know that there is an um, OPD, Office of the Public Defender. I know there is the Office of the Ombudsman. I know that there is a um, citizens' rights um, um, directorate, Center, yeah. there, yes. and I also know that there is um, the domestic and uh, violence um, persons, uh, domestic violence response uh, team. So these are all agencies you will find in Alausa. Okay. So it depends on where you go to. Mm. Then if you go to a mediation center, the mediation center is actually to book a peace in that. You do not lose. There has to be a win-win situation. You don't feel that I've been cheated mm. or that, you know, and you don't feel that, oh, I've won it all. So it's give and take. That's what they do in the mediation center. Okay. You understand me? So when you, um, you go to any of these centers and you feel that you have not gotten justice or you feel that, oh, I'm not satisfied with what the outcome of is, you can always write, you know, to the... Um, Commission of maybe Women Affairs or whatever uh, commission that commission, uh, ministry that covered the interest of um, what you want went to do. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So th they have that opportunity. Yes. Okay. Th that was the case of one of the issues uh, put forward by Akola. The police also, uh, as it were, forcing people to yes. write statements. In fact, for me, it's a beautiful thing. Mm. If they force you to write what they want. Mm. Tell them you cannot write. They should write for you. Okay. When they write for you, don't worry. Append your signature. Mm. Do you understand me? Okay. For me, it's a good defense. Involuntariness. I didn't write it. Do you understand me? I, they wrote it for me and said I should sign. Mm. So in, th in that, the case has already crumbled before it even started. That's Do you understand one. me? But if you are being forced to write something mm. and you know, I know Nigerians don't like to be beaten. I would have asked, wait for them to beat you so they can be marked for you to show to the court mm. that you have coerced, you were forced to write this thing. Mm. That's interesting. You, you, you've just jogged my memory. I, I think uh, you will have to find time for us to uh, have a program on this station. Well, because I noticed and I agree with you that we are majorly ignorant of our rights. Exactly. We don't know what to do under certain circumstances. So we need to create a program here where we enlighten people. When you're under this circumstance, this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do, and so on. I think we need it here. So please be ready, because we're going to float that <laughs> on. my pleasure. OK. Now, um, the, 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 we still have a few minutes for you to call. Please call us and tell us your, what the experience is like. Or if you have any legal question you know, bothering you, you, you are free to ask now. Uh, the lawyer is here to, to give you the answer. If you have a case that you think you've been handling or pursuing and there's no light, Please call, tell us, and uh, let us uh, see what can be said from this end, especially concerning children. Because we're talking of children, they are helpless, seven year old, six year old, they are made house helps or labor or what call it, well, you know what we mean. And they work under terrible conditions. conditions. You've seen the picture of the, the girl we showed there, seven, nine year old, battered, even with electric um, uh, iron. iron. You know, uh, it, it's inhuman. If you know such stories, please call and tell us now, and uh, let's talk about it. Now, you, you talked of the, the homes um, registered to take care of such children when they are right. rescued. Um, are individuals not allowed to have homes? Of course. 
the individual that are allowed to have homes, but it must register. But it must them. be registered okay. because if it's unapproved, mm. you run a cost. You run. You run a problem mm. of you know facing um, um, charges like kidnapping, okay. you know, and abduction. Okay. So if it is registered, the government, mm. um, majorly the um, Ministry of Youth or women affairs mm. have a supervisory role. They go from time to time to check on the children, making sure that these homes, you know, keep to the highest standard, you know, of um, um, child safety and all that. So basically everybody can have a home. Anybody who has a passion can have a home. Okay. But you must meet the government guidelines. Okay. Yeah. So, do I understand you to mean that uh, legally there's no uh, uh, provision uh, that restricts the length of a case in court. It's just open-ended. It could be 20 years, 15 years. Like I said, mm. we have beautiful laws, but implementation. Okay. People, the, the justice, the, the judicial system is hampered by a lack of manpower. It's hampered by lack of um, sufficient budgetary allocation. Without money, there's little or nothing people can do. The lawyers now. Yeah, the lawyer, the judiciary. Judicial. Without money, if they need money. If, for instance, my okay, I my I have, I have a sister in the UK, and there was a matter she had in court, uh, you know, and within a week, she got her judgment, and I was like, beautiful. Where is it possible in Nigeria? It can't be possible because over there, you have a judge who maybe has three or four matters in a day. So why won't he speedily conclude these cases? Hello, well, yeah, good morning. I'm telling you that this is not a hearsay. It's something that I have seen several cases. Hello. Yeah. A judge, a, a magistrate had over 60 cases. Hello. In a day. Wait. Lined up in a day. That's almost impossible. Citizen Fred, how are you? Hello, good morning to the people in your house. Okay, by my time this afternoon, you're welcome. Okay, you're calling from again. Okay. Yes, let's hear from you. Okay. Uh, please, I want to know where can we report any case of uh, abuse of child because we are live that some um, incident that is going that parents will be beating their child mentally, you know, giving different kinds of car or anything. So I want to know the agency or the place that is in charge of all those cases that I can report to for them to persecute the parents or to take any action. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Citizen Fred. Okay, where can we report from? Well, um, we have an office in Alagbado, area of Lagos State, mm -hmm. and um, our office is open to receiving um, reports. But you can also go to any the nearest Nigerian police department. You ask of the uh, JWC okay. and, um, or the FSU uh, or gender departments, mm. and then lay your case when it concerns the child. You understand me? And um, most often, um, human rights organizations like us, mm. you know, always put the police on their toes when the cases come through us because they know we're not there for pecuniary benefits. Yeah. I'm a lawyer of, of, of um, almost 15 years, so I have, I'm not relying on this to, you know, feed myself. Yeah. So I'm doing this because it's a passion, it's a calling. So that's that's it. Okay. Mm. I, I think at the end of the program, you'll be able to give us your contact so that, that people can easily uh, get in touch. Because there, I can tell you there are many cases that people don't know how to handle or go about. Okay. You're watching your program, Citizens Voice. The numbers are still on your screen. Uh, we should be there um, for you to call and share with us your experience or ask a question. And um, we just have a minute left for that. So if you're already dialing, Please do so quickly so we can listen to you. Otherwise, uh, it will be next time. All right. We, 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 you've said a lot about uh, delayed justice in our society. But this case of uh, uh, orders from above, how do you think it can be handled? Um, I think um, the, the, the sooner we begin to realize that this country is for all of us, mm -hmm. nobody owns it more than the other person. That's when we can begin to address this issue. When we begin to realize that the child we did not protect today may be the child that will be the end of our own children. That's when we begin to get it right. When we begin to put our humanity first before any other sentiments, 
then we are getting it right. Because you that you are calling from above, remember that this child that we did not take care of might be the end of your own children. Because it becomes a miscreant, it becomes a nuisance to the society. If you, who says that by chance you won't come across a child one day and, and end your child? I'm robbers are children. Yeah. Kidnappers are children. They are people's children. And if we do not look out for these children, they will come back to haunt us. They will be the end of us as a country. If you think that, oh, I'm from I'm at the above, I'm on, 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 up there, remember that no situation is permanent. One day from up there, you may come down. And in your coming down, be careful lest you fall. Because there might not be anyone to really hold you when you fall. It might be the, the, the thorns, the broken bottles, the, 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 the nails that you have put down down there that will be your final resting place wow. so we should just be careful wonderful food for thought there um barrister and Didi taiwo joe thank you for coming but before you go give us your contact so that those who have cases they want to discuss can quickly come to you okay um we are stop the abuse against women and children foundation and our contact phone contact number is um zero seven zero eight zero four four one one zero one. I take it again. Yes. Zero seven zero eight zero four four one one zero one. Okay. Yes. Um our office is at seven six two um Lagos about an expressway. And uh, Lagos Abicta Expressway, sorry. <laughs> Lagos Abicta Expressway. And um we can get us on um Twitter at Stop the Abuse Foundation at um Facebook stop the abuse and on Instagram we have um, um stop the abuse too. Okay. Yes. Interesting. So you can reach her and uh, discuss any matters with her. She's a lawyer and she's in a position to advise you. Want well, to thank you again for your company. Thank you, uh, Barrister and Atayojo, for coming. We hope to have you again. Remember, as I said, <laughs> we're going to have a program where we enlighten people on the laws, what to do and what not to do. Thank you for watching, and uh, we hope to see you again uh, next week. We are also trying to see if we can adjust or create another forum for this program so that at least twice in a week we can talk. I'm Ambrose Ezewani. Brighten up the face with some smiles, and if you see someone without any, give him one of yours. Bye-bye now.